What's going on, folks? You can find us at offcolordiscussions.blueberry.net. Subscribe there on iTunes, Android app, Stitcher, TuneIn. Find us on Facebook, OCD-OffColorDiscussions. This week's episode, we have Brendan Gavin, owner of GC Contractor 603, BCK Knives, and uh, the YouTube channel, Down South Survival. Uh, check them out. All the links are going to be posted down there. It was a good, it was an awesome time. Um, so let's get into it. Yeah, we're good. Let's live. We're, we're, good, we're here, live. Yeah. We're here. Sitting with Brandon Gavin, owner of GC Contracting 603 and Down South Survival. Survival. On YouTube, you can go check them out, find them. We're going to create an Instagram page for them today, show them how to do some shit. Yeah, I was going to ask way. if you had one. These, no, and that's, that's, what, that's what we got talking about before um, was not, and with all the knives and stuff that you make, you really should because you can use that platform to uh, showcase what you've made and then have your links to your YouTube page, have your links, even you can post to Facebook from Instagram. So, I mean, Instagram is really what you should be using, even for your construction same thing because then you can go if you have a link that goes either to your facebook page or if you have a website that showcases everything you got so people know how to get a hold of you and what you do nowadays instagram is like the centerpiece for everything it's connected to everything <laughs> yeah snapchat's getting big too like but i don't know snapchat yet i, I still don't even uh, get snapchat yeah it's still there are a lot of businesses that are going to start using it soon i don't think facebook is dying uh they're slowly evolving and growing into more but i think i think they own instagram yeah i believe they do actually <laughs> i believe they bought them out of uh couple years ago i mean they link everything to it if you take a picture of that and post it on facebook you can just link it right to uh instagram same thing at all just intertwined <laughs> yeah i mean uh, well i know you can post a twitter from instagram too you can do pretty much pretty much all of them do you have a website for your construction yeah you do so yeah so well, I mean, it's, only, it's a facebook thing it's just like the knife thing you know it's just that yeah it's all part of that that's the way to go nowadays because you can target your audience i mean we learned a lot about that recently about yeah. how you can promote and on a cheap advertising budget i mean little dollars a month to to boost a page or a, a business or whatever you're doing i mean an event that you're come that's coming up i've learned actually recently that a lot of uh charities do the same thing they spend a 100 bucks to boost it for a month and they reach 10 times as many people really so, yeah yeah i know uh looking at because we just started the website for this uh we're on a hosting service so we could get on itunes and all that and looking at the statistics uh, this past week or today even, we have 24 downloads in Japan. Japan. I don't know nobody don't know, in Japan. I don't know how I got there, but we're there. So, uh, how'd you even get into knife making? Um, I got the knife making from my uh, cousins in Georgia. They have a shop at their house. Have um, they got a power hammer, anvils? You know, they got the whole nine yards. So I started it with them. Um, then you know, when I got here, there wasn't that many people doing knives and whatever. And I tried to get back into it. Hardest thing with making knives or starting to make knives is finding anvils and tools. Um, that's the biggest thing. Um, I probably searched for an anvil for two years. Damn. Wow. And you can find anvils, but all these guys are doing as antiques. So they're selling anvils for, you know, just just like a basic anvil. So you want to buy a Peter Wright. That's an old anvil. They're made years ago, right? So you're talking 1850s, 1860s, whatever. These people are trying to get 13, 14, two grand out of an anvil. Damn. Wow. So to get in it, in, in, get into knife making, there's a little bit to it. So where I started is I built my own forge, um, watched a couple of YouTube channels. Um, there's a couple of guys on there. Uh, Kildred is one. Um, it's the other guy. Um, anyway, he's he's a big YouTube guy. He's got like 7 million subscribers. So wow. he... Huh? Wow. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's up there. Uh, King of Random, that's who it is. And uh, you can make all this stuff and make your own forge. And it was made out of a coffee can. So my first knife was out of a piece of leaf spring steel that I got from my buddy. Uh, coffee can forge. A crappy hammer from Harbor Freight. And a piece of granite smashed it out hardened it in some you know oil and that was the first knife 
Hmm, nice. I still have it. Um, but I made the micarta. Um, made the obviously the brass pins. Made those and stuff because we make everything. I mean, we we do top, you know start to finish that type of stuff. So when I was like, all right, I'm gonna start making knives. I started going looking at all these antique shops. Um, shopping around at yard sales, this, that, and the other. Bought my first anvil from a guy local, and that's what this guy does. He picks up all kinds of blacksmithing tools. So I bought a 30-pound anvil from the guy and used that for a little bit for probably five or six knives. And then Craigslist, guy found a 200-pound Fisher anvil. Wow. So wow. that's a beast. You know, to carry that thing into the house is... <laughs> the garage is a little bit of work. Shit, I got one sitting in my work. I have never seen not one person ever use it, ever. Sitting on a big block. <laughs> it's about, I don't know, 18 inches or so wide, I think, from tip to end. And it just sits bolted to this thing in my <laughs> and we're in the metal shop. And no, I've never seen anybody use it ever. It's you should see if you can't get that from me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll talk to them, see what they're doing with it. Hey, when's the last time you used that anvil? You back when, you when back when they were making their own nails. Probably. Probably. So now, you're not originally from here, no. as you said. Now, how long can have you, you lived up here? Yeah, I can tell, but I've li- <laughs> I'm not originally from here either, but I've been here 20 years, so. I'm, I'm close to that. I've been up here 16, 17 years. All right. Um, you know, I, I like it here. It was too hot in Georgia, so. Yeah. <laughs> it stinks. Yeah. The humidity is <laughs> impressive. Oh, crazy. What part in, of Georgia? Uh, North Georgia. I'm a little bit above Atlanta, so. I lived so in Northwest. Douglasville for a little while. <laughs> you were right near me then. You lived next to where my dad lived. Carrollton. Yeah. But yeah. That's where I was. Yeah. For uh, a little over a year, I lived there. Yeah. So I, was, I mean, it's nice friend. down there. The food's great, but summers are bad. Oh, God, it's hot. Okay, my brother-in-law and a couple of friends live in Savannah, yep. which is nice because it's at least on the ocean. But oh, yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. <clears throat> now, you said we when you were talking about making the knives. Is it you and someone else that make everything? Or? Nah, I say we own a lot of stuff because I'm I didn't know if you had a, a business, but a, a partner. <laughs> no, the, the wife does all the videos. Uh, right. Or she puts all the videos on facebook and you know this that and the other um i just basically make them and she does all the all the rest of the stuff all the promoting and stuff that's cool nice little team effort i just didn't know if you had somebody else that was helping you make them or made other stuff like you did knives and they special and you know axes and tomahawks and stuff no and we make all i mean we you know you watch a lot of guys they special in you know this knife or this knife or this or this or whatever um Obviously, I made tomahawks. I made a combat uh, tactical knife for a buddy of mine. He's an Ovet. He's in Desert Storm. Served, I think, 10 years or something like that. He wanted me to make him a knife, and he's like, this is kind of what I like, and this is kind of what I like. And I'm like, all right. So, did a couple ideas and a couple of, you know, drawings for him, and he's like, that's what I want. I made nice. him one, and, uh, you know, it's a, it, was a, it was a crazy looking knife. It's rated on the top. The top, the other half of it was uh, sharp, sharp on the bottom. It had all these crazy cutouts on it. My car to handle we did uh we did the uh, sheath for him too and everything and he had a special way he wanted to carry it with all his gear and that type of stuff right. he does um he does some tactical training that type of stuff so he wanted a you know a brute of a knife and it was a brute nice and you can see that you know on the channel we kind of did a video on that um i think there's two or three videos on that knife that we did too on youtube so actually i think every knife that we've done actually has been on youtube um we do some other stuff on there too but uh you know all of our knives we may not show them you know start to finish but um you know now how long does it usually take you to make just an average order like someone comes in and say i want i want this and so that knife for him we got about 15 hours in that knife um and that's 15 like actual working hours um just in the knife alone the sheath you know takes another couple hours to get that all wrapped up you know that knife was it was it was very it was a lot to cut um that was the first time we ever did a serrated edge so that was a little bit challenging that type of stuff but other than that i mean you know it's um for that knife it was a it was a you know it was a process um but most knives you know that you watch the forge and fire tv show and you see them do it you know six hours that's not realistic you know what i mean that's you're not gonna make a lot in that time but they're making a lot bigger knives so you know eight eight to nine hours you know is usually what i have in a knife something like that Cool. And then you got the, but you got the times in between, you know, between that. So, you know, by the time you cool it, you know, you're putting it actually in the oven and tempering it and that type of stuff. You know, you're, that time's just not part of that, you know, actual making time because oh. you're, you're down an hour, two hours tempering it, um, you know, glue setting up for the handles, that type of stuff. So, yeah. Oh, uh, and plus trying to squeeze it in with everything else I'm sure you're doing. Oh, yeah. Not from Georgia. Yeah. I'm sure you hunt, right? Oh, yeah. Bow hunter? Bow and gun. Oh, bow and gun. Yeah. Oh, nice. You like the hunting around here? 
A uh, little scarce? Yeah, it's a little scarce. <laughs> <laughs> I know there are some people that go here that will sit in stands, but I know I have a friend that goes out to Ohio for 10 days. I think he's out there. Like you said before, where you go to Georgia for pretty much that same amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. You go pig hunting? We do pig hunting down there, yeah. yeah. And my uncle's got some land down there, and he uh, he does a lot of pig hunting stuff, so. I've heard about it, never seen it. That's awesome. I've heard it's amazing. Oh, it's great. Yeah, it's now, great. Pig. Now, that's like all wild down there. That's because I know they have those giant reserves yeah that are like seven thousand acres or whatever that they you're basically guaranteed to get something oh yeah so but you're down there like hunting them in the wild and oh yeah and grabbing a couple <laughs> well down there i mean if you can't kill a pig you probably shouldn't be hunting you know what i mean yeah you you can see three four hundred pigs in one area so <laughs> yeah they're a problem down there they're a huge problem yeah uh, they've been a problem for some time too but that's why there's no you know close season on them you just need a just a you know you just need your hunting license and you can just kill as many as you want Go out there's, there's no some. there's no bag limit on you know yeah on pigs you buy tags down there or no it's just you don't need tags you just need your hunting license that's it hmm. but for deer obviously need you, you need your yeah. tags I and mean, if you you know hunt turkey whatever but pigs i mean yeah pigs just, are a problem yeah that's one one thing that i've heard from other uh hunting podcasts that i've listened to is that pigs are a problem in a lot of places like texas they'll just mow them down with like a chopper oh yeah they drive on like ted nugent will just drive over with a helicopter and just out the side like that's just, crazy they're a problem even in uh hawaii too they just rip up vegetation and you, know, you get those activists it's that wild don't, spam don't kill don't kill all these animals but it's like you, if i kill. don't nobody else is going to that's especially right. like the wild boars like i mean they're vicious so I seen Ted Nugent and a pig man in a helicopter, and they were just unloading on them. <laughs> That's so <laughs> awesome. ARs, just full auto ARs. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. I've heard that a lot, though, from people that I know that hunt. Their best hunting is always out of the state. Yeah. Like anywhere, <laughs> like New York. They'll go to New York, and they'll hunt for, you know, four or five days. Come yeah, back I mean, with time. Like I, I definitely want to go uh, everywhere I can hunting. I mean, I still want to hunt here, too, when I, when I can, but uh, I definitely want to take trips to go other places to see what it's like oh yeah hunting down south georgia's man there's nothing like it you're it's looking awesome. for a nice little vacation uh, i'm gonna yeah. head down to georgia go do some hunting for a week oh yeah <laughs> it's awesome down there i mean there's, there's people down there that take uh take bulldogs and wrap them up with leather you know body armor and they'll run up to them and stab them with a buoy knife you know what i mean or a spear <laughs> that's not for me but yeah <laughs> What? You gotta so, have some big cojones to do that one, you know. Lord of the Flies type shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, where do you get the metal from to do the knives? So that's the thing. You, you see, again, you watch. I mean, Forge and Fire is a big thing. You know what I mean? And it's actually made a lot of knife makers or new knife makers come out. It's but it's made a problem to find you know tools. So like I was on eBay the other day, right? And I was looking for some tongs. <laughs> Dude, they go so fast and they're so overpriced. You know, a set of tongs cost you 20, 30 bucks. You know, you're paying 200 bucks for it. So about like those big ones that you would pull stuff out of a fire? Right, oven? right. Yeah. So I have tongs that, you know, I made. Um, because you can make them. I mean, you get into blacksmith, and you should know how to do that anyway. If you're going to be making knives and stuff, I mean, you want to you want to know your skill, you know. Um, but you can make it out of anything. I got some. Uh, I stopped at a place in uh, was it at Hudson? Yeah, in Hudson, and they had a bunch of steel cable. I'm going to make some cable Damascus with it. It's like this tomahawk here. That's um that's fifty one sixty leaf spring steel out of yeah. a car. You ta- you talking about the uh, scrapyard in uh, Hudson? No, it's not a scrapyard. They were. It's just a company that has. They have a bunch of metal. They do uh, road work and stuff, but they had some steel ropes, right? Right. And uh, I was like, hey, do you guys have any, you know, cable or steel rope or whatever? I want to make some Damascus. And the guy's like, I don't know. Just go out there and look in the trash bin. Yeah. And I go out in the damn trash bin, and there's a huge piece of cable. I mean, it's an inch and a quarter round cable. You know what I mean? Nice. And... I wish I still had that sword. Not the oh well, I don't know. You you know Dragon Ball Z, so you might know. Uh, Bleach. Yeah. There's an anime, and the <clears throat> one of the main guys, uh, Ichiro, has this giant sword that I mean, I think the width of the blade is like eight inches or so, <laughs> six inches, and then it and then it you know goes up to its tip. I don't even remember where I found like it's 
probably quarter inch fucking metal <laughs> that I found uh, somewhere that I had my friend cut to basically, I mean, it was a giant club. <laughs> like, it, it probably wouldn't cut paper, but it definitely like break your arm and, and some skin. Like it was heavy as hell. And I gave it to a friend of mine to hold on when we moved down to Pennsylvania. And <clears throat> I think one of the times when I came back up, I was like, oh, you still got that? He's like, nah, I scrapped it, man. <laughs> wasn't even would, yours. <laughs> wouldn't I have given it to you if you were just going to scrap it? Well, the reason I ask is that there was a place we used to bring a lot of our old metal and stuff that, or they would come and get it right. in, in huts and they're like right on the border. Um, and that's, that's all they have. They take everything and washing machines, everything, break it down, separate it and either recycle it or resell it or whatever they're doing with it. Yeah. But, I got a buddy that does the same thing and he's, uh, you know, he's got all kinds of metal over there. I mean, getting metal is easy. I mean, that's probably the easiest part because you can buy it from, you know, Admiral Steel or, um, any metal place you know local middle place you can get a you know get a decent steel um there's a couple places around here so i ordered some 1095 high carbon steel from admiral steel they ship it right to your house i think it cost me 100 bucks nice you know for a couple long sticks and i can probably make 20 knives you know if they're under 10 inches probably make 20 knives out of that but you know you can go to a find an old car rip the leaf springs out of it coil springs whatever most of that stuff's 5160 steel and you can make some really nice blades out of it and you know 5160 over you know w1 or o02 you know d2 all these different steels i mean there's so many different kind of steels out there you know 5160 is pretty forgiving and you can harden it in like peanut oil or canola right. oil you don't have uh-huh. to buy a high you know high speed quenching oil which will cost you upwards of 150 bucks for you know a gallon of that stuff so how do you harden it you what you basically want to do uh, or w- what i do anyway is uh you run it through heat cycles right so you want to get it hot you want to get it to a certain temperature you bring it out and you let it cool off and you want you look for the colors right you do that three or four cycles and you get your metal to where you want it then you stick the metal in the forge close it all up if you want get it hot um and you just watch the metal and the metal kind of tell you when it's ready you know it's um you hear people talk about the blacksmiths that keep the shops really dark there's a reason for that because they're looking for that steel to be a certain temperature and they're looking for a certain color Hmm. so as soon as you get it at that color they call it non-magnetic so you can take the steel out right and you touch it to a magnet it won't stick to the magnet at all (laughs) and what it is is the molecules and all the metal is doing a what it does when you get it that hot and it just kind of opens up you touch it and then immediately you want to put it in and people talk about putting it to true magnetic north because you don't want it to warp this that and the other which i do i've never tried to do it any other way i just find out what north is and i've always done it that way but if you don't do it that way you see them talk about warping and that type of stuff and that's what can happen because supposedly when it goes as soon as you cool it if you're pointing south it wants to go north and that's when you get a warp in it Gotcha. Is there one that you just didn't want to let go of? That you just that you finished and you went, oh, I can't. That's it. That's it right <laughs> That's there? That's the one. That's yeah. the one that was just, uh, well, at least you didn't have to let go of it. Nope. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I made that for myself and knew what I wanted. And I just, like I said, I made it for me. Um, the only thing that we don't make realistically is the wood. I buy all the wood off of eBay. Um, and I really like all the burls. Um, that's what they call bird's eye maple. It's, uh, if you've ever seen a maple tree or an oak tree or any kind of tree with that big, ugly knot off the side of it. Yeah. Um, especially around like the base where the roots and stuff is. That's what that is. Huh. Um, but it leaves a really nice, beautiful um, finish on the wood. And you can kind of see that. It looks like it's got all these crazy lines and stuff in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I like it. Like it's, it's got like a unique look to it that you don't see in the like wooden handles. Right. Like, I mean, looking at the tomahawk to this, like it's just completely different. And I'll put pictures up for everybody to see so they can check it out and get an idea. Now, the tomahawk, you know, that's that's made from so many pieces. I did a... I just did that to see, basically, I was trying to see how that would actually turn out. Um, and I didn't make the tomahawk with a tang on it, which, you know, I probably should have. But, you know, it was the first one I was doing. I actually started with, uh, you see a lot of guys do the railroad spike tomahawks. And, um, you know, I started with one of those, but the thing was so rusted and beat up. After, I don't know, about three heats, trying to bang it out, it just cracked. Right. So, um, you know, that's the other thing. You know, you got to know, kind of working with the steel, how how old and how beat up it is. And that steel was pretty rough. So, um, immediately went to this, and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to try a little something different. So, got a, I, had a, I had that oak dowel um, from a job. It was 
a little piece left over. Um, and then, you know, those are copper fittings off of some work that we did. And I just wound up taking some brass pins and, you know, drilling straight through that thing. And uh, then I silver soldered the top on it. And I went out and hit an oak log that I had out back. Thing is rock solid. Um, I JB welded it epoxy it, brass pins uh silver solder i mean that thing i've hit some heavy hard stuff with that thing i actually even hit a concrete block and i didn't it's not came loose so no budging no budging and then <laughs> because of that you know the handle was a little because it's rounded um so i kind of flattened it out with a grind uh with a belt sander and uh then just wrapped it with a little piece of leather i had I and mean, some of that cord wrap there but you know like i said i've hit some pretty crazy stuff with that tomahawk and thinking it was gonna explode and it didn't <laughs> You know, yeah. So. Now you've been doing this seriously for how long now? About ten. You said about well. Now since I've you been, moved up here, right? No, I didn't. Before I've, I've actually gotten back into it for probably the past year, heavy. Oh, again. okay. So it's been it's been actually not that long. Um, hmm. But with uh, you know, again, with all this stuff that's on YouTube, Forged in Fire, all these videos, it's it's insane. Um, Almost like when Storage Wars was going on, yeah. and everybody yeah. was like, "Oh shit, you can do that!" Not realizing that it's at least for them. I mean, they set it up to make TV. I'm sure, like you said, uh, with Forge and Fire, where it says they're only taking six hours, they're they're probably not taking six hours, but you know they. Right, so time if, lapse that shit. If you if you watch, well, and they and they could be doing that, but if you go watch them, you know, and they go home for the five days to make a sword. I mean, they're working probably all day long to make that sword, so that's a realistic time of what it's going to look like, what it's going to be. Um, you know, and the sword's a little bit more involved, um, but you know, knife making, it's you know, it's all the same thing. It's all blacksmithing. You know, you can screw up a knife in one second. You know, I've done. I started grinding. Um, a knife the other day messed up let it go and the damn thing got hung up in the grinder and it's destroyed no. you know and it's you get that thing to almost finish and you're like yeah i got 20 minutes to go i got to then you're done have you made a sword yet no no doesn't sound like you have plans to either <laughs> no but i am planning on making a kukri though um I'm sorry. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not uh, familiar. A kukri. Um, I showed you uh, the one that was in my truck. It's kind of got the bent. Oh, okay. Like that. So that's a kukri. Um, Jason Knight. I'll Google it for you. Yeah. Okay. One of the the <laughs> guy on Jason Knight that's on Forge and Fire. That's what he's known for. He makes some crazy looking kukris, man. They're they're awesome. It's basically a, a machete on steroids. <laughs> that's all. <awesome. laughs> yeah, they're just they're badass. So I like the pins. Like are. Do you make them all like the same way? Like no. So that pin on that is got one square um, stainless or aluminum, one solid copper, um, and one open brass, I think, or something like that. And then the outside is brass. So what I do is I'll take epoxy, I'll put it in that main tube, and then I'll take all the other ones and jam them in there, and then you that's where you get the pin. So if you look at this one here... Uh, this one looks like kind of looks like a flower and that's just a bunch of pins together yeah there you go that's what it looks like that's pretty badass <laughs> Oh, no shit. Deadly. Neat. And pin making's not, I mean, there's no really art to that. I mean, it's not that hard to do, but it's just time consuming because you got to get that damn, you know, epoxy in there and you got to get it set up quick. You know yeah, I, mean? I so, imagine it, it uh, seals or dries up real yeah, fast. Yeah, super fast. And I mean, I, I only have some like five and 15 minute epoxy. So, um, but if you worked with another epoxy, you know, you could probably get, you know, like 30 minutes or something like that. You get more time. Um, I'm kind of always rushed to do stuff. So it's tough. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure timing is, uh, oh, is a lot essence. of essence. <laughs> yeah, especially with the construction. How's that? You guys are busy all the time, huh? Yeah. I saw a picture of the uh, showers. Uh, or, yeah, it was a shower that you guys did. Yeah, it was custom all shower. And then uh, I think it was a living room wall yeah. that I saw today. That I mean, it's a lot of tile work. Yeah. A lot of tile work. And you, you're working around, like, you left the um, the mount for the TV there, and you just work around it. Yeah. That's yeah. A pain in the ass. It can be a lot, that's for sure. And we do when we do so much different stuff, you know what I mean? It's crazy. So it's just like the knives. I mean, we're not we're not just we don't make just one specific knife. We'll make anything. It's the same thing with the construction. We'll do you know, we'll do roof. whatever they want. Yeah, <laughs> we don't care. And it we can knife, do it all. <laughs> the knife making is more of a release for me to just get out and do something different, you know what I mean? So and it's fun and you know, people are all interested in it now. It's like the biggest, it's the new big thing, is knife making. On your YouTube channel, you were given a, doing a giveaway? Is that still live or is that? 
Uh, is I that an older one? I could. Uh, yeah, they're all. We have them all the time. So we've done. I want to say three or four giveaways. We're actually doing another giveaway, um, and people should definitely go check that video out. One of the guys that's one of our kind of YouTube friends, um, Country Prepper, he actually makes the Kydex sheets like these, but he does... We're not as good at the Kydex as this guy is. I mean, he makes some crazy Kydex stuff. Um, but he's got some complications from Hodgkin's lymphoma and leukemia that he had some time back. Um, his liver's failing, and he's not able to do as much. So what we're doing is we're doing a basically a custom build-your-own-knife. We got the knife already cut out. We've not hardened it. We've not done anything to it. Um, people can go on and give to a GoFundMe page from uh Keep Fear Outdoors opened up and whoever gives the most is going to wind up with that knife and they can order any type of handle they want so they can get my card up which I showed them what we basically have in stock any type any type of my card uh, um leopard wood redwood burl bird's eye maple burl curly maple black walnut um, which is what that is there um, or like a heart it's a heart maple piece of a you know heart out of the wood um, they can get any of those with um, the inside scales any color they want so they can basically custom build their own knife um, to whoever gives out you know the most money on that GoFundMe page sweet I'll put the link on the page yeah, yeah definitely because he's uh, you know he's a really good guy he does a lot of stuff for prepping and um, survival tactics and that type of stuff and he, like I said he does really good kydex you know anybody looking for a kydex sheath I would say contact him because he is he's on top of it so it's just like a plastic so it is a, a plastic. You gotta, you gotta mold and so what we do is heat that up in a in an oven or in um, we got a small little oven that we use actually. It's a little black and decker like toaster. Yep. You throw it in there and you can watch it. It um, it gets you know just kind of warm. Taken. We built the own the press that we put it in. Put it in the press, fold it over, and then you know you leave it in there for you know fifteen minutes, hmm. and uh, it forms to the knife take it out um, grind it all off and kind of grind it to shape and then you can kind of do like the push tabs and that type of stuff on it um, and then you just drill and put the pins in it there again that's something new I'm working on Kydex is a little this is this is the new part of it yeah I haven't done a lot of Kydex but you know they come out alright sure it'd be um, easy to, to fuck up real quick uh, you can definitely do that really fast <laughs> uh, I've done that a few times and you can and you can overheat it but this is something else that really you can get into Kydex cheap um, you can build your own press. The pins are cheap. Um, the pin press is cheap. And you can even get the Kydex on eBay for nothing. Like, I got 10 sheets. I think I paid 20 bucks for 10 sheets, 12 by 12 sheets. Oh, wow. Yeah, so Jeez. you can get three, you know, three good knife sheets out of that, no problem. And they sell it in different thicknesses and everything else. You can do it for guns, you know, your pistols, that type of stuff. Uh, so, on your YouTube channel, not only do you show the knives and of what you made and stuff like that, you also do survival prep uh, and review products, right? We do review products for guns, knives, um, you know, outdoorsy camping type stuff. We do that. Um, there's so much stuff. It's on YouTube, and we and a lot of people do the same thing we do. Um, the only difference is, is a lot of the stuff, like even the knives, um, we go out and test them. You know what I mean? We actually, like all these knives have been used somehow or another. Um, I told you before. I went out with the tomahawk as soon as it was done and it was ready to go. I went out and hit some oak and just went crazy on it and nice. exploded that piece of oak. I mean, it. I went eight, you know, just going eight man on it, going all Mel Gibson and Patriot. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> and uh, you know, it's just we just test everything, and it's the same thing with survival stuff. We do you know, do the bug out bag, um, did that, um, and then you know, again, all the giveaways and stuff. So, and we try to do a giveaway every other month, every month, whatever, um, you know, just to say thank you to our subscribers and that type of stuff. So now you've been doing the YouTube thing probably about the same amount of time. About a year or so, or yeah. le even less than that? Uh, no, about a year. I think we have 39 videos, 40 videos, something like that. Do you ever reach out to people or like companies to to offer testing or to um, try try to get them in with you? Such as like, I don't know, like the backpack that you have there that's your, your bug out bag. Or, or even any of the, the guns. Like I assume those are all your guns that are in the, the opening of the video. That's a few of them, yeah. 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 That's not all of them. But nice, yeah. Nicely lined up. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> How many guns you got? Uh, a lot. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> Enough. Enough. <laughs> Enough. 
I, I, you know, it's no. Um, everything that we've reviewed or we're going to review or whatever is stuff that I bought for myself that I'm going to use when I go hiking, camping, whatever. Um, I did a few videos actually when we went hiking showing some of the knives um, from like because I, I, I buy a lot of my knives off of eBay off of CFK there's a lot of people that say CFK is not a company US company all their stuff's made in Pakistan blah 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 um, I don't care if they're made in Pakistan or not because the knives that we give away are CFK knives um, we, we're going to give away some of the ones we make also um, but CFK knives they make a lot of Damascus um and if you, I don't know if you've ever seen one, but they're they're nice. Um, but I did a couple of videos on a bushcraft knife that I got from them, and the bushcraft knife is just—I mean, it's a freaking beast, man. You know what I mean? It's a quarter-inch spine. It's thick. It's heavy. I mean, you can chop a damn tree down with it. I've you know split logs, um, baton in that between the thing, and it's just—it's evil as hell. Um, and other stuff that we reviewed is stuff obviously that we've used too. Um, I really like doing the reviews um, on stuff that I've actually used. Um, a lot of these guys get stuff sent to them, these battle boxes, all this stuff. And a lot of that stuff they just give away, you know what I mean? Which is right. cool. But they, they've not tested any of that stuff, you know what I mean? So This is all stuff you've used, actually, yeah. while camping or out hunting or whatever you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's a real review. Not just, here, here's our product. Here's a list of things to say. <laughs> Thanks for playing. Yeah, and I think I think a lot of that, and and again, I have nothing against any of those guys that do any of that type of stuff, but um, you can't really give it a great review if you've not used it for one, and two, if they're just giving it to you. Sometimes you know they might say, "Well, hey, you know, you know, fudge it a little bit." I don't, I don't know if that's how it goes down, but it seems like a lot of that stuff they get sent. I I didn't care for them. So yeah, yeah, I've I've noticed stuff like that with uh, like the game. I watch a lot of gaming videos, and they do a lot of reviews on PC builds and stuff like that. And there's a lot of good ones out there and then there's a few that get sprinkled in that i've seen it's just like they sent you that they sent you a paragraph to say about it and now you give it away to promote the company so but a lot of them are real like they use it they they play with it they game with it all that stuff so that's why i said that because some people do get those packages because they're those big subscribe like those big youtube guys that have like you know 15 20 million uh subscribers and shit they make all their money from that like companies they're basically using them to advertise so right there's a girl that my youngest watches and she'll play with these stupid freaking toys but a lot of it's like oh they sent me this and let me open it it's like oh yeah it's pretty neat like it's squishy here and whatever and then we'll play with it make all these voices and whatever but i know i mean because she's geared towards kids like she's making millions millions of, of, of followers and subscribers like into it and it's whatever like i just can't get into that stuff but what the kid toys yeah, or just no, the no, youtube no. thing in general no the kid toys uh, you know youtube i it's weird because i did not like youtube for the longest time and then i started watching videos and i mean there's a lot out there it you sucked you in <laughs> yeah you can learn a lot and there's a lot of cool, cool stuff to watch i mean my my youtube subscribe list is crazy i watch anything from car stuff to you know how to garden you know what i mean so oh me too it's it's insane <laughs> i follow like a gamut of things yeah there's probably over a hundred people that i follow and a lot of them are game based or or computer based but there there's definitely those ones that are outside i mean i'm a huge fan of watching hoonigan uh videos the 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 car videos they're they're so awesome who's the guy that put ken block ken Ken block Block, those guys like i got them on watching some of those videos if you haven't seen it look for his his uh hoonicorn the hoonicorn mustang you can watch that one dude the thing is crazy i'll show it to you before i think i've seen that the other day it is the craziest thing you just gotta watch out with what's on youtube too because you can become dumb real quick yeah with the flat earth stuff and uh some of the conspiracy theory rabbit holes that you can take oh, yeah. Can oh, yeah. dive down real quick and it's like god damn it just spent 13 hours looking at what <laughs> That's, that's not me. I mean, if it's not educational or has to something do something with what I'm interested in, I'm 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 out of that quickly. It's completely like I used to think it was completely geared to the younger generation because everything is in short time. Like you can watch episodes of a series or a show that you follow. And they're like 12 minute episodes. And kids Man. don't they they have that kind of attention span. And then I started watching it and I'm like Oh, well, it's kind of cool. I just squeezed in two videos, and it took less time than watching, you know, an episode of Daredevil. Which, by the way, I have started season two. Yeah. So, 
yeah. lot of a lot of stuff I think also is what's kind of popular at the time because a lot of my videos you know I, I obviously monitor them and one of the biggest hits I've had is on the, the Devil Forge that I got for Christmas um, and it's a company out of I think Lithuania it's 180 bucks for the one that I have um, you got to do a mod for it for you know American you know gases but that thing's got so many reviews and so many views and comments on it and some of the knife videos it just doesn't seem like it's you know they don't take off or the bug out bag or this or that or the other but that one thing that forge is just huge on my channel yeah um but i think a lot of that's got to do with a forge and fire and it's the same thing with like the the belt grinder that i got um it's a great belt grinder i love the thing i mean it's, it does anything the rest of them do but that that video has got more views because of forged in fire yeah. you know it seems that way anyway and i could be totally wrong but um you know nobody cares about the the old coal forge blower that i rebuilt um <laughs> you know it doesn't have the have the views and because nobody wants to hand crank coal forge you what know their crap. steel except for those except for those hardcore people who are like no, you know it. and there are tens of thousands if not hundreds, hundreds of thousands of them out there who are interested in it i found that on youtube especially lately it's the thumbnail and the um tagline like not necessarily yeah. clickbait but there are videos that i've see, like i've watched before and then months later they'll change the thumbnail which is more appealing and like i found this video by watching another video and i was like oh, i'll check this out too now they change that thumb thumbnail and as soon as i see it i'm like oh i want to check this out and i realize it's the same video i already watched months ago right <laughs> so i mean by changing the thumbnail and the the actual title of the video I've noticed will bring people in much quicker even if you've seen it before and these are people like I follow so they've changed it up in like a yeah. month or two and damn it damn it I, I got tricked again, again. Yeah. well I think that's one of the biggest things with the clickbait thing because I've seen uh, it's a farm girl you'll have to just put in farm girl this is a girl she's got a huge chest she's always in some kind of crazy skimpy top or bikini and all they're doing is showing like videos about gardening or whatever right but they get a lot of flack for clickbait so i tried that i was like oh, i'll see what i see how that works and i put the, a picture of a girl on one of my things i didn't see that it got any more or any less or whatever oh um, really yeah <laughs> And I was like, oh, I'll try the farm girl. Yeah, that didn't work. Yeah. So I'm disappointed if there's no girl in it. Like I Oh, this I girl's totally in it. Okay. Oh, see. Yeah. <laughs> I would be a little upset. I would I would put it on there. Do just... you advertise when you put on new videos? Like on your on your Facebook page, you ever throw out like oh new videos up? Yeah, so no. you gotta as I'm slowly learning what to look for in in the advertising part, as soon as uh an episode goes up i put it up on the page from what i've been told a, a picture with it will get more looks than without and then when i share like post it on the page so people that are following the page they'll get the notification but then i also go into my own personal one and i'll share it that way and i know he does the same thing yeah. so that way it's it's out there because i mean yeah we have a lot of the same friends but we also have friends that we don't other family or whatever so it's it's always as soon as something's up on youtube is getting it the word out there more and more and especially if like your giveaway that you're doing for your friend i would put that up there and then put five bucks and you can target the age group that you're looking for male female but also you can put in their interest so people that like forge and fire or people that like knives and hunting survival that type of stuff you can tag that in there to to broaden that range for five dollars for a day or you can stretch it out for five days man i just sounded canadian there when i said out but hey. uh but yeah <laughs> sorry but, but 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 doing that you can you can help boost people going to your YouTube page. I mean, putting it on YouTube is not enough, especially from what I've seen with the people that my son follows, is that as soon as he's on, puts a video out, he's on Twitter nonstop. He posts to Twitter all the time. And I mean, the, uh, when I took him down to see him, I started following him on Twitter just so that I can like, he's like, oh, show him that we're here and stuff like that. And to help him out. But it's like, I mean, I know he's got, he just got 16 million followers. That's on, like on him, YouTube. Right? Yeah. 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 Kids love that guy. I, I didn't he, know anything about him until his son. He's at least kid friendly. <laughs> right. Unlike, you know, if he's going to play games and do stuff, at least he's kid friendly. Whereas there are some that are not are so not. kid yeah, friendly right, with, right. which whatever. I mean, he's, he's at that age that I'm not going to just don't say it around your mother. Right. So, 
<laughs> so it's all about advertising and getting the word out there if you have to boost it now maybe one like your bug out bag the video you're like man i don't really care that much but still throw it out there at least on your page in the link there because i mean with the facebook i mean you could put the link to everything you can share it on everything um or just even save the video and say it's on youtube but i know just from doing this like it's as soon as it's up it's put it out there to get it out a lot of these content creators though too i mean they're pumping this shit out oh yeah they're they're doing three four videos a week i've noticed with people especially that i follow uh they have lower some of them have lower subscriber bases but i think a lot of that has to do with the fact that they're not content scheduled they're not doing every week they're every wednesday every friday they're putting up a new video you know what i'm saying like they're doing it once every other week so they're not getting as many people following them they like them they like what they're putting up they're just not putting up enough of it for them and i mean people who start in that like us eventually we want to do all that but right. on on the youtube do live streams right. all that stuff but well that's what i started was and that's again before we had to take off and move somewhere else but um we was doing like thursday thoughts you know what i mean that's the thing we put up we're gonna start doing knife maker builds and that type of stuff um but again we're and i and i did a video the other day and i was like hey you know we're not gone we're just moved no it's been a month you know before we got a video out but we definitely i would definitely want to get back in to doing that i want to get you know thursday thoughts and knife builds and you know that type of stuff out there and even if it goes to you know reviews or guns or whatever that we're talking about um i definitely want to get back into that um now do you review guns yeah and you do like a test and everything like you take them out to the shooting range and just do the whole gamut of it yeah i mean i got so many you know scopes and builds and you know ar builds and that type of stuff i want to do you know videos on whatever i can that like i said that we built or or made or whatever um because i've even done you know like some wood carving stuff i even put that video on there i'm not that great of a wood carver but i got into it and made some spoons and wood spirits and all that type of stuff carved it and even put those videos on how many guns you got that you got from a game supper just curious what's that how many guns you got that you won from a game supper raffle <laughs> a game supper? You, you never had oh see you're you're new to hunting i don't know if they do them it's, in georgia you never even win hunting. <laughs> i haven't but everybody that i know who hunts does these game suppers where they do once a year everybody they get together and they buy tickets for raffle and they give away guns and all this stuff and they bring food in of stuff that they've you know they killed. killed or got killed and butchered and frozen. They just they have a big dinner get together. Everybody drinks and at like a lodge, you know, or a VA uh, like a veterans place. Well, I can tell you, I've never done that because I ain't that lucky. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I know people who have won. Like I know someone who has probably thirty guns or maybe even forty guns and won. 10 of them. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, just through these game supper raffles. You just you spend like 15, 20 bucks and you buy like five or six tickets. And, you know, it's always the same guys that go every year, you know. So, it's only so many people who can win it every year. But I always say if I didn't have bad luck, I wouldn't have no luck at all. So, <laughs> <laughs> what's the biggest deer you got? Probably a 10 pointer. Oh, wow. Yeah. They're not, they're, you know, it's a good size one, though. <laughs> it's good. It, down south, there are a billion of them. They're just not big. Right. Um, once you go South Georgia and go in the swamps and find some big old mossy oak deer, you know, you go to Kentucky, 10 pointer is a, is an elephant, you know, I think that's yeah. a monster. And the same thing up here, you know, 10 pointer up here is probably a big deer. Yeah. Um, well, pointer. I know they were, they limited the hunting years ago and they just recently, the population has bounced back. Oh, same thing crazy. with turkeys, like turkeys I mean, have taken that's, over. That's what the whole thing is, is conservation is population control and making sure that when they grow, I mean, the deer in America now, because of the conservation and the population control, there's more deer now than there was uh, back in like the revolutionary times. Yeah. Yeah. So 1700s, there's more bigger and more maybe of them not now. That far back. I, I'm trying to remember what exactly I heard, but I know it's there's more deer now than there's been. I mean, New Jersey, you can't can't go 10 miles without hitting one. Yeah, Pennsylvania is that yeah. way. Too. Pennsylvania yeah, yeah, and I know from being down there, the first day of hunting, like that state shuts down. Like, nope, it's hunting day. We're all going hunting. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I gotta I gotta work today, so can we open up? Like, I, <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah I noticed that too. You get a lot of people at work at. Like there's roofing companies and stuff around. There's a, all of them hunt. There are a lot of oh, them, yeah. you know. And then it's like opening day. They shut down for at least half the day. You know, in the morning everybody kind of goes out and does their respective hunting, and then they might come in that day. But well, you know, I say this to everybody: you should hunt. You should own guns. It's um, it's part of your Second Amendment right, and you know that type of stuff. And you know, people 
you got you got people that don't like guns and that's fine whatever but i want to hunt and whether it's with a gun or a bow or whatever and that's what i want to do yeah um and i teach my kids you know safety with guns and bows and even a knife you know like i said this is my daughter's knife it's her skin and knife i made that for her when she finally gets a deer you know she wants uh but she's into all that stuff she's she like hunting she loves hunting yeah loves it see how much, how much would a knife like this cost um probably have- 75 bucks from for me to make it no you know this knife again cfk ebay um that knife's probably gonna run you about the same thing um but if you buy this knife from say jason knight one of the guys on forge and fire um you know any any of those big name guys those knives are four five six hundred bucks yeah um that's how it always is with yeah the bigger the name you know the product is what well, more well known right doug barkaida you see the guy on there he's a tactical guy um knife expert he trained a lot of military that type of stuff uh, he just came out with some knives um i think it was the dart series that he just came out with it's a carry you know it's just a just a pocket knife and i looked them up i seen it on i seen it on youtube um went and looked up the knife and it's like 300 bucks to buy it and it's a pocket knife Wow. Jesus. So, is it a badass knife? I guarantee it's a badass knife because that guy knows his stuff. But, yeah, am I gonna pay that? I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's probably a it's probably a you know a small market that's gonna buy one of those types of knives. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Do you ever do the etching or anything on like the blade? I do. Um, that's just something else I'm working on too. Um, a couple of my knives have our logo um, on it. But it takes a lot to cut it out because I cut it out of a uh, again something else I learned on YouTube. Um, it takes a lot to cut it out how I cut it out because I just take a piece of um, packing tape and it takes me a minute to sit there with an exacto knife and cut the whole thing out. Um, really want to get somebody that makes um, those little templates and you can buy it from those guys. And there's several guys you can buy them from. Uh, and you just stick it on there, do your etching, you pull a sticker off, and it's there. Hmm. Um, but you know, for me to do it, <laughs> it, t- it takes it takes an hour to two hours just to to cut that all out. Um, to etch it and etching takes no time you know it's just salt water and a um a battery or um a battery charger and you just dip it and just sit there and etch it back and forth but Hmm. it takes forever to cut it out yeah i got a shit ton of throwing knives if you want you can take them play around with them i probably own more knives than i should own i think i i think i did a count right after i got into doing this again it was like 200 knives Wow. With machetes, swords, um, all kind of Japanese stuff I have. Um, I mean, it's it's insane. Are you I, able to, like, display any of the really good ones? That's or? what I want to do. Um, I had it displayed, uh, you know, a while ago in a place I lived in. Um, had, you know, all the all the swords I own hung up. I mean, I've got some United Cutlery swords, um, which is, you know, they're decent swords. Um all kind of japanese just everything i mean katanas tontos i mean you name it if it's got anything to do with any type of oriental blade weaponry i probably own it nice i mean i got so much stuff and then you know that pocket knives kukuris stuff i bought off of ebay like the cfk stuff i mean i'm not really trying to push cfk but you know it's just a great knife company to me yeah um and because they make so much different stuff uh in damascus i mean that's a big thing now too everybody and their mother wants damascus blades is that just a type of steel uh so all japanese well i shouldn't say all but mostly all japanese swords are damascus damascus i don't i didn't bring one with me but it's the pattern that's in blades so you'll see it looks like it's black and then kind of silver you've seen it on if you watch forged and fired you've definitely seen damascus uh, there's so many ways to make it too um but with the japanese swords is they don't they don't etch it the same way everybody else does so you don't really see it um but that little line that you see the hamon line that's um blood yeah it's um that's done with clay so they don't they just don't bring it out but they I watched the thing not too, that long ago, but Damascus is actually, they thought it was only in Japan, right? And it's been in like old India for even longer. So you're talking thousands and thousands of years that they wound up found in, you know, finding Damascus. And, and it's a hard blade. So you take two steels, you take like a 1095 high carbon and a nickel steel, um, which is what everybody does now. And you weld that together. You forge weld that, that steel together. You keep, 
turn it over. You talk about you know the old stuff. You hear people talk about layering yeah. steel, so it's been folded three hundred times or whatever. So every time you know if you got an eight billet, you know eight layer billet, every time you fold that, it's times itself. You know the first time sixteen, then sixteen turns into you know, and it just keeps going and yeah. going and going and going. You you dip that in a ferric chloride or an acid. You pull it out, you wash it off, you'll get that pattern. You know, the, the carbon steel will blacken, the nickel will never blacken, and that's where you'll get a pattern in it. Huh. Um, and it's a very hard steel. Uh, like I said, most Japanese swords, I mean, you see you see them do some crazy shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. They hit concrete blocks and just explode them to pieces, you know what I mean? And you won't even see a damn chip out of it. So... Got kind of a bullet shot out of a gun. Oh yeah, I saw that video. I don't know how it? real it is. Yeah. Well, it's, they stood they stood the blade up. Oh no, That's no, no. What it, oh no. So they stood the the sword and uh, vice, and then you know he aimed up and you saw it shoot and it splits the splits the bullet. The beer I got today, I've been hearing a lot about this, is the little something something ale. I hope I'm saying this right. Look, and I I'm kind of ashamed that if I don't. La Guintas? Go ahead, try that. La Guintas? La Guinta? I don't think it's Guint. Okay, well, anyways, it's uh. It's not from here, you know. That. No, we're, it's we're from California. We're on New England on this one. Well, okay, wow, see, you went on the far side. See, I don't, like I don't beer discriminate. I mean, I, I like local beers. I like our region. I like the way things are brewed. But I also like other beers. So, I went West Coast on this one. There you go. So, and it's from a little town in California. And we just liked it for the pinup girl that's on the front. And we will be posting a picture of the bottle because the, the little Hispanic pinup girl is pretty pretty dope. <laughs> so, Honey, get me a beer for You got to be fridge. careful with these. They are 7.5. So one, maybe two, this and then head to bed. <laughs> unlimited release, it says? Yeah, unlimited release. Did you release. read all this shit on the bottle? So like it says... I did at the store. So we're all on collective disability. That's cool. Let's put some ice on it and keep ourselves elevated for a while. So what's on the tube? Honey, get me a beer from the fridge, will ya, sweetie? Please? That's what it says around <laughs> the label. Does yours say the same yeah, thing? Yeah, it says the same thing. Yeah. So Dude, what the That fuck? I did not read. I, I thought you meant the brewing and location of which it was brewed and bottled. No, I did not read. Look, it tells you how to pronounce it right there. Lagunitas. My glass glasses Need- prescription is not that... Sh- that strong do yeah, you just I, wear I, them for looks well no i wear them to see but just not closely yeah okay <laughs> i i don't want i'm too young to admit that i need reading glasses so i just you got great hair bud you have no hair right now oh, i get that but i'm saying you could fit the look like you would with just, the reading you, glasses yeah you just finish it off no i can't do that whole looking over the top of my glasses to see regular shit and then looking down my nose to read shit and get some bifocals i'm not even not even touching the bifocals get some trifocals i will go legally <laughs> blind before i go why don't you just get the they get that contact lens shit that they're like dropping in people's eyes to give you like that augmented so you can see they can fix blind people now you know i've so thought about the whole contact thing but then because it's a little hard to see at work sometimes and yeah. just so we're you clear, it's glasses, not a safety right? issue. It's just more of a distance issue. So, but I don't, I don't like the idea of. I've seen people with contacts, man, poking at their eye, losing shit. No, I think I'll just be half blind. And <laughs> well, why not just get the stronger glasses then? I'm hoping to get LASIK at some point. There you go. Except for the fact that I found out that they have you awake the whole time. They do, it's which. So well, I mean... That's something out of a Saw movie, in my opinion. Like, if you saw that shit in a movie, tell me you wouldn't be terrified of people laying you down, like, cutting your eyelids open, or you're cutting your eyes open, peeling shit back with lasers and cute little tweezers. You must numb it, though. Huh? You must numb it. I don't know. How do you numb an eyeball? You squirt... Novocaine? Yeah, liquid. basically. All all up in your eyeball. I'll, fucking I'll, rub it around. I'm going to have to look into that and see how just, do. You don't have to keep your eyes open. They clamp you open. No, I'm pretty sure you got to keep your eyes open. You have to no. be awake the whole time. Right. I get that you have to be awake, but what I'm saying is they're going to hold your eyes open because if some shit is flying towards oh, your yeah, face, yeah, yeah. your reaction is going to go, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. No, I, I got a mental picture of like these giant like metal things holding your eye. Like the Saw movie. Yeah, kind of. You need to stop it. watching Saw. Then. You know it's just a movie. <laughs> I understand the world is fucked up, but it ain't that fucked up. Well, that's, know, what if that laser malfunctions or something? Yeah. Something? And I don't know. You get money and a glass eyeball. You can get like a smiley face in there. Remember, was it Last Action Hero where they got, the villain had all the fucking eyeballs oh, yeah. that he put in there? Or Gangs so, of New wow. York and he's got the... There got you the, go. 
That's pretty Eagle good. and the shield on there, too. I can even go sing where that uh, the lizard old lady has the glass eye that rotates around all the time. I know you know what sing is. You got kids. Don't get out of here with that look. Bro, I love that movie. <laughs> that sing. elephant can sing. sing? It's the, uh, oh, the pigs? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Welcome to Peaky Power. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, uh, kids, man. So let's wrap this up. This stuff is delicious. It's got a nice earthy taste to it. I kind of dig it. It's definitely a one or two per, like night. A- per night. Yeah. They had one brewed. Yeah. I noticed it on the way out. And just a quick plug for them, I guess. Uh, they had one that was a Millie Stout, which I'm assuming is the Millie's. Used to yeah, be Millie's. Stark. Yeah. They yeah. also had a Manch Vegas uh, Scotch um, Scotch Ale. Yeah, and I ne- I never really had one of those. So I didn't know like what it was related to. Like, how, what it, it was an IPA. Was it kind of, Apparently, it's like a... An ale with a... Like a soap. heavy wheat. Is how the guy described it. It's wheat. It's kind of like a heavy wheat. So Zima's back. Just saying. What's that? Zima. 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 It's back, baby. Zima. High I school. It, I saw it on the sign uh, next next to a tortilla flats the other day. Oh yeah, we got Zima. We got Zima for all the high school kids <laughs> isn't that what, I think that's all that drank it when Zemo was out the first that's time funny. that's when it came out it was, it was like high, high school, school kids it was like you like get you messed up though my it's parents had a, oh yeah <laughs> my <laughs> parents had a party only thing left in the cooler was Zima thanks for coming <laughs> thank you uh, tell everybody where they can find you again so that way they know I'm going to put all the links up but uh, BCK Knives on Facebook uh, obviously Down South Survival on YouTube um, and then you said we're going to hook up on Instagram so we will we'll get that going. Instagram tag to to come soon. So, uh, all right, all right, man. Thanks again. Appreciate Thanks. it. All right, folks. That was the episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed having him on. Uh, like I said, all the links will be on offcolordiscussions.blueberry.net. They'll be posted when we post up the episode. Uh, check them out. Go subscribe. Subscribe to his YouTube channel. Help him grow. His knives are really awesome. Uh, So, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And we'll see you next week. Peace.